Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today I want to talk about the Confederate officer pictured here. His name is Randolph Harrison McKim, native of Maryland, and he saw a lot of the Civil War. He started out in July of 1861 as a man in the ranks of the 1st Maryland Infantry, went on to become a staff officer to Stonewall Jackson, George H. Stewart, and eventually becoming a chaplain in a Virginia Infantry Regiment by the time that the war ended. In 1910, his memoirs were published called A Soldier's Recollections, and in it he talks about those close to four years in Confederate uniform and all the varied experiences he had along the way. As I was skimming the book looking for information, I stumbled upon a passage that really caught my attention. It involved stopping at the home of Thomas Jefferson Randolph, the grandson of President Thomas Jefferson, in a January day in 1864. They have a discussion, and during that discussion, we learn about the slavery debate that occurred in Virginia's House of Delegates during the 1831-32 session, 30 years before the Civil War. Really curious. And I want to share this passage with you just to give you an idea of what these two men talked about. And then also McKim's opinions on that slavery debate and what the outcome could have been. So let's start with the passage. Quote, it was not until January 25th, 1864, that I was able to rejoin my regiment, McKim says. Starting early, I rode across the Blue Ridge and made Clover Plains by evening, the lovely home of my aunt, Mrs. John Bowling Garrett, on the eastern slope of the mountains. Next day, I dined at the dear old university, from whose classic shades so many of us went forth in 1861 to join the Confederate armies and pushed on in the afternoon to Edge Hill, the home of Colonel Thomas Jefferson Randolph, grandson of Thomas Jefferson. Beautifully situated on a hill, almost under the shadow of famous Monticello. How well I recall the giant form of Colonel Randolph as he sat and talked of the olden days of Virginia, of his illustrious grandfather, and of the legislature of Virginia in 1832, when the whole state was so deeply stirred by the scheme for the emancipation of Negroes. He was a member of that body, and he told me that a large majority of the members was in favor of the measure, but after careful consideration, it was deemed wiser to postpone action upon it until the next session in order that the details of the scheme might be more maturely considered. But before the legislature reassembled, there occurred a violent ebullition of fanaticism on the part of the abolitionists of New England. The Southern slaveholders were held up to the scorn and detestation of mankind, and the vengeance of God and man was invoked against them for the awful crime of slavery. The consequence was a complete reaction of public opinion in Virginia on the subject of the abolition of slavery, so that when the legislature next assembled, the whole project was dropped. Thus was wrecked the most hopeful scheme of getting rid of the institution of slavery that had ever been proposed since its introduction in 1619. We may lament that the men of Virginia did not rise superior to the feelings naturally begotten by this unfair and fanatical assault, but human nature being what it is, we cannot be surprised that the affair terminated as it did. Had it been otherwise, had the gradual emancipation of the slaves been decreed by Virginia, there can be little doubt that Maryland, Kentucky, Missouri, North Carolina, and Tennessee would have followed her example, and in time, the moral pressure on the cotton states would have been so strong that they too must have adopted some scheme of emancipation 
that this blessed consummation was not realized must be set down to the account of the fanatical abolitionists because of their violent and unjust arraignment of the South for an institution which she did not create but had inherited and against which the state of Virginia had many times protested in her early history. Wow, end quote. Wow, what a passage. An interesting story about how McKim is sitting with the grandson of the third president of the United States talking about that session, that legislative session, 1831, 1832, where they debated the emancipation of slavery. Now, what McKim did not mention was if it had happened, the Civil War might likely not have occurred. He wouldn't have been sitting there. He wouldn't have been wearing the gray or butternut uniform that we see him wearing in this photograph. He also didn't mention the 1831, the timing of that 1831-1832 session with respect to why they would debate the topic then. Well, I went there immediately, the Nat Turner revolt. The 1831 revolt seemed to be the logical consequence of that. And so I went hunting for information and I easily found it in the Encyclopedia of Virginia. I wanna read the entry, it's relatively short. It's titled, The Virginia Slavery Debate of 1831 to 1832. It fills in the blanks. It gives you some context around McKim and that conversation back in January of 1864. The encyclopedia says, quote, the Virginia slavery debate occurred in the House of Delegates during its 1831-1832 session and was prompted by a slave insurrection in August 1831, led by Nat Turner. In the months that followed, about 40 petitions signed by more than 2,000 Virginians urged the General Assembly to engage the problems associated with slavery. Some petitions called for outright emancipation, others for colonization. Many focused on removing from the state free blacks who were widely seen as nefarious in influence. The House established a select committee, and when the debate finally spilled over into the full body, in mid-January 1832, it focused on two resolutions. One, made by William O. Good, called for the rejection of all petitions calling for emancipation. Another, made by Thomas Jefferson Randolph, asked the committee to prepare an emancipation plan to go before the state's voters. By taking up these questions, the House, in effect, considered whether to free Virginia's enslaved population. After vigorous debate, members declined to pass such a law, deciding instead that they should await a more definite development of public opinion. In fact, pro-slavery, anti-abolitionist opinion hardened in Virginia in the years that followed, buttressed by arguments previewed in the House. Randolph believed that even having such an open debate should be considered a victory, while others lamented how divided the state was on the crucial question of slavery. End quote. So there you have it. Thomas Jefferson Randolph, the great debate of 1831-1832 on the topic of slavery a little moment in history to consider. When we think about the Civil War, we talk about the connections to slavery, the freedom of the slaves. And here's one of those moments in time, 30 years, three decades before the war, when Virginia debated that very topic. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.